Military Appreciation uh, Appreciation Month. If you don't stand behind your troops, feel free to stand in front of them. Right, fruit. I love me fruit. Uh, there's quite a bit of fruit when I started off. Uh, stuff you couldn't get uh, for our show, when, which is first Saturday September. It's quite a bit of fruit. I ain't ready then, or it's gone over or whatever. But I noticed this uh, Tayberry. I'm looking at the small print. And it's fruit in August, September. When's our show? Right in the middle. Perfect. That'll do me. So I sent away for him. Uh, Netherlands. Quite a bit come from the Netherlands. When I got the chap looking at him. Uh, fruits in July. More we're on that one. Redbury. Never heard of a, a Redbury. Turn the label over. Yep, July. That's no good for me. So I emailed him. Good morning, Mick. Thank you for contacting us. I'm very sorry for what appears to have been a packing error. We'll get the correct table sent out to you as quickly as possible, as you may. And you may, of course, keep the red berry with our compliments. Your new order. Uh, except our apologies and what crap. Right, Jerry, while well, we got all of you, I've Googled red berry and mm. I, I can't find nothing. Uh, it's what they call raspberries. It's it's their term for raspberries, Mick. Uh, uh, well, raspberries is fairly unique to us. Yeah, um, it is. Uh, and so, yeah, I spent a lot of time there over there in the past. They all call all sorts of things, different things. Oh, excellent. Grow, it, it'll be all right. It'll, it'll grow well for you. Also, they sent these. Uh, obviously. Uh, oh, lovely. These were free. They'll be fine. Got no room for them anyway. But I'll take them for our bring a boy next week. Uh, Something else I complained about. Uh, these was from uh, Taylor's, as you can see, Taylor's bulbs. Good morning, just opened a bag of your Gladiola bulbs, Bangladesh, which are a good exhibition variety. Nice, white, larger. These are what I won in the raffle, a, a talk I did uh, last week. Five out of the ten are alive. Photo included. There was five of them dead as a ferret. Good afternoon. Thank you for your email. We strive to address all issues within 10 working days and will be in touch shortly. Thank you for your patience. Dear Mick, many thanks for your email. I showed your pictures to one of our ultimates who said that the corms have been stored somewhere warm, hence the reason that they have dried out. I have some replacements. Can you send me your email? Dried out, them bloody died. I'm dead as a ferret. Why are half of them good and half of them really road? Bit of info I've learned today. Today, in 1606, the original Union flag was adopted for all British ships. It would be a further 101 years before it became the flag of the United Kingdom when the Act of Union was passed. This came up, I think it was, um, uh, I think it said nine years ago. I've never seen that long, bloody no. Norman Soper, he's been, uh, well, he weren't in the Garden Club in the sense that he come to the meetings, but he used to use a trading sheds and he was one of our best uh, veg exhibitors, as you can see, there's his pot leaks. And uh, not many people could beat him in the Midlands. And obviously, I had a good year with my branch leaks as well. Bit of greening on that one, let him down slightly, but a uh, cork was all the same. Uh, this was uh, established Pot Leaf Society. I used to be um, secretary of that. Obviously, uh, Norman won, won with his pot, and I won with branch. But a uh, good fellow. Who's that? That's our Steve from Brum, making his old for his gladdies. Have you bummed about yet, Steve? No, not yet. I've dug all the holes. Good man, good man. We've we got a frost again tonight, ain't we? Yeah, I had my cormlets. I sent you that photo with the cormlets, didn't I, of um, Nigel? Yeah. 
I could have bunged him on, couldn't I? Right, uh, Ben's back down um, London again. He, he's managed to get um, a place. Well, he, his mate's mate has, has gone away for a few months and he, he's, he's nicked his room, basically. When he gets about, uh, and you say that, I was honoured to be asked to draw a creature in this wonderful book entitled The Classic of Mountains and Seas, an illustration book of Chinese mythical beasts. And... Uh, I've done a drawing for him. You've chuffed a bit so of that. Well, and the author was, they've got a stand next to where Ben's stand is on the market. So he's still doing his bits. Saw this yesterday. Expert garden suppliers. Root grow, my cross of fungi. 60 gram for eight quid. Jesus, what? I sell 400 gram for a fiver. And I'm making a profit. Uh, this also come up from uh, five years ago. Muddy Boots, this place, um, Nikki Smith, her place is in uh, Wolverhampton, not too far from Muddy Boots, that's where you come along as well. And the setup they got is brilliant. If there's something like that around here, or I'd be involved without volunteering for it. Uh, people will really learn difficulties, everything. But it was a, a, a good day, we had a great day there. Excellent. The talk I did last week, Sutton Coalfield Future Society in Garden and Guild. Uh, this is the next day. Fantastic night. Thank you so much, my party, for stepping in. Tell them they were uh, the speaker they had uh, cancelled the night before. And they asked us, I said, Yeah, I'm free. I'm coming. But a uh, good night. Luckily, they got me back again next week, next, next year. We're going to take a work in this area to remove camera, pole and stick. It's right up the mayor's Aris. I love this. <laughs> <coughs> Is that going to do a garden? I don't know. Right. Uh, somebody who lives local, that saw me down uh, last year, says, save us some seed. I says, yeah, there's a packet here for you. Just nip in when you're passing. And there ain't been passing. So I thought I might as well start them off for a so I did. A bit of a Mickey light on top. A bit of waiter. I'm bugging me in propagator. You know, I've got most of me canners out. I've got a bit of room in the propagator. I think there's four more canners in their seeds. This is looking at uh, these. So that little one. Yeah, you know, you've got a nice bit of root in it. And there's is the, the big one. He's got nice white thick roots as well, so I'm potting both on. So he's going into him, then that one is going into him. Good brew under his Aris, obviously. Get the auto want in the pot. Make the mound and bung him in. All I'm doing is pressing around the outside, not the plant itself. Firm it in that way. That was probably the size I had it from, from Lidl. Probably about um, three months ago. And the bigger now, um, the, these were two cuttings off it. He's in the bathroom. He's a corker. If I'd have known then, I'd have got two, two more plants. Although, having said that, I'd have run out of room in the greenhouse. But not. He's a bit off cut. So I'm going to make sure he's off cut there. So when he does go in, he'll be in the middle. Like so. Give him a good word, uh, wagering, tepid greenhouse. Temperature rain water. Red zebra. This is a cork of a canna. Flowers beautiful. Only got three plants. Um one I sent down to Lizzie down South Wales. Another one I get a mate and I'll keep in this chap. Want some babies off him later on. Or slice them. Rise them. But he's telling me he's potting on as well. Uh, at me gladiolo annual during the week. I ain't had time to read it yet. Because I'll never perf. Going through some of the stuff in the in the loft. Got this out. See where I took the dust off it on the front. Caslon Primary School. Uh, Mrs. worked up there as a nurse. Her nurse started off. Then there was adult link worker. 
So all the time I was there, I did voluntary work. Uh, that's where I did at the back there, where it's all clear. That's where the allotment was later on. In, but this originally is our youngest Aaron. And Benny played the year above. Um, I trained him for the football, coach, ref, everything. And because uh, it was a small school, we was in the small schools league for Dudley and Borough Council. And we won it first time ever. Two post schools were expected to win like they do every year. And then uh, we thrapped them. They like it. They don't like it up. Them. But I still run them ragged. I said, you want to be in the team. And, uh, but they did well. Good lads. Forgot I got them. These two, that's a flower shirt we got in the windies. We went to uh, Antigua. The flower mill, the sacks they used to have, they made, made shirts, that obviously them faded. But uh, Boston shirts. When I joined the mob, the old man uh, bought me that camera, Super 8 City. So I, I took film all over the world. And my last ship, <coughs> I was taught to a few lads from Newcastle. And that's when I used to leg it up there for weekends or whatever. Exhibition, how beautiful. But I used to bring these Mats back to stick on the end of my raised beds down the plot. But I've kept them three, found them in the loft and all. And this one, borrowed this from the fire station before they closed it. Danger pole drop fireman only. And I found these two out. Well, there's a, a few new rods I've seen. Right back up the garden. My stump that I'm protecting, stop the rain getting in. If it's dried out, which it has. So I'm going to put some more jazz fluid in. Let that soak in. I need to kill the roots off. It will eventually. Uh, I bought him round from the side. I, I needed a couple more of these pots, the Evians, and uh, they are a foot, uh, foot square, so I've got to keep a look out for this. Right, anybody who knows your ladybirds, um, am I correct in thinking these foreign chaps, the ones who look like him, not like a normal ladybird, I'm jobbing all our ladybirds. Like them too. So do I squash them or just flick them over next door? Right. As normal, filling up and watering. This chap, I love Paul Davis uh, last week, uh, last year. He's a corker. We'll come back on to him in a bit. This was uh, last week when there's no frost and I left these out and my gladio corbels. So all the pots was on the back end as well. Let the sun get to them. This is, uh, was it last weekend or weekend of fire? The women's rugby. World rugby. Up against Scotland. Boston game. <coughs> 46 nil. I do better than bloody men. Right, this is a uh, get it dark as you see. But the day before, I said there's going to be no frost. So I thought, I got to do nothing. And then I saw the weather after tea and they, and they changed it. There's going to be a frost, air frost. I thought, bloody no. So I had to go out and that's why it's getting dark. There's my fleece. And just bung it over my uh, little chaps. My gladdies were still out. Got them down the side. They've got a bit, bit of protection, obviously, both ears. But I, I still put some fleece over them anyway. So on the night, I'm here, Totty. Good man. Highness, checking them. On the morning, take it off. Right, this is me exhibition scented sweet peas. Uh, from planting, if you remember, about halfway up the pot, compost, put my seeds in. That was water thoroughly. Then dry compost on the top. And nothing till they start coming through. And they've just started coming through. But I'll wait till a few more come through. That's my aid to memory. So wait. And there's my second one. No water. Took this photo. Uh, this is on the Asbury State, not too far away. Because that was where... Mothers and fathers first out, 
and that's where they stayed till they uh, had to move retirement or more died meaning a chap there when further moved in that was about two foot high when he put it in and and that's the size of it now obviously but just going past I thought I could take a photo of that and show the rest of the family I'd love to have a look around that house now and the back garden Mucklow houses these are well built they're uh, from new and uh, they got good size back gardens so we'll go further into gardening still a bit of a colour tulip wise or whatever if I remember the last zoom I top dressed all these raised beds with uh, my compost good brew got to keep an eye on everything trying to find room so them a lot to make space I put a cane up and just ferried them up there out the road strawberries fruiting just take the flower off right these chaps that I put in the shed with the forecast mother frost again I just lifted them before I put them in yeah there's a little slug take the chap off just like to... right this is my stump kind of bed for this year so them lot are coming off. There's my three inch down pipe with tubing. So I take the cover off. I've got eleven stations. Uh, I think these are nine inches apart between each carrot. Uh, different lengths. I've used these before. Like that one is a stump carrot. If I do long carrot, it go down to the next mile. It's only the stump. I mean, it's, it's a good raised bed anyway. All these I'm working from waist height, no bending. You're going to think when you get old. So I put him in upright, shaking him out. Yeah, he's going to come out. So I've got a cane and that prods him out. Perfect. And I'm very clear. I thought I'd do what I used to do uh, years ago when I used to show carrots, make it easier for going in. That's better. Now it'll go in easier. I can get the grey medium out. And that's what I got out of one bore hole. So you see the good brew on the top, then the further I get down, then I've got the soil. So I'm going down to that one there. So he is. That's 17 inches. Right out of one bore hole, I've got two and a half uh, litre of compost. It's just so I can work out what, what's going in. Obviously, I do spare as well. The stuff I'm getting out, any crap, I get thrown uh, away. And I've got a good uh, bit of stuff. So from an 100 litre mix, um, I've got two and a half litre times 11. And I'm just working out from that at 31 litre summit. But that's my raised bed. That stuff will go on there. Then I shall collect a bit as well. There's quite a bit coming out. And that'll be put into my um, soil bag. Under me staging. Well, again, these are because I've got these claps in. I've got some pots. And I'm just put, putting them over the top. And there's also 10 pegs and, and they're going in the same level as that and it holds them in stop the wind blowing them and that works lucifer canners lucifer these are a corker boston flower uh, i had these three and obviously he's thrown a little extra so the rhizome was across horizontal so that one i'm going to split so give me an extra one. Good brew. This is a mixture of my uh, compost plus the leaf mould. So I'm going to untangle the chap to get to the rhizome, which is there. Well, I'm going to slice him. Then I'm going to seal him. Straight down the middle. Because... I've got roots either side, so straight down the middle of it. Nice clean cut. Obviously, a bit of a soil on that.
bit of gum, gum for his Irish. Hold him while I fill him up. Yes, that's give me an extra one. Bougainvillea, he's drawing out as well. Of course, he wants potting on. This was also from Lidl. And uh, he is also a standard. But he was dry as a ferret. So I'll get him picked me up as well. Right, these two. Well, there's one there, Ginger. 26 of the ninth for last year. Uh, ben wanted some because he used it. Now, do they grow like that? Or, I don't know. Well, I'm going to upright it. Any row, they don't look right. Me being a sort of perfectionist. Plus, it'll help them out because you've got a, a decent brew on his Irish. When I get to talk to the Black Country Fusion Society over Wolverhampton Way, Or was it from the last meeting? One of the few societies. Now it was the last one, Sean Caulfield. I had this chap off him. Yeah, let's pot him on as well. So I'll give him a nice brew under his iris as well. How about that? So all I'm doing is pushing again around the outside stuff as well. And uh, this will be a standard as well. That's why I picked him. All the others are on display. Those are good everywhere. But he's got a nice stem on him. In fact, I could chop them two off. I might see you later on. Right, back to our mate here. He started throwing a little shoot. So I told the gaffer, Ed, Money flowers, we can bug him in the kitchen. I had this one off um, Paul Davis last year. He had some stuff from B&Q donated for our bring a boy. And this, one of these was in it. And I love the leaf. I love a variegated leaf. I was in the flowers are bonus. <coughs> so I thought, I'm going to keep him, see if I can overwinter him. And I am. So as soon as he flowers, he's going in the kitchen. Blue bells, white bells, they were just coming through. There's a few purple ones in there as well. It was just uh, another bit of colour. I know they're a bit messy when they, they die back, but I'll just pull them out and compost them. Right, these four on the front are uh, still kind of seeds. They should have germinated by now. So I'll give them another day, I'll threaten them. So my dwarf canna, which was open pollinated. This is what I had, I had off from Lynn. Uh, a daughter went to Nepal and they went out to visit and I borrowed some seed. And this seed from Nepal, where I bought back, it's the best for germination I've had so far. But obviously, these five ain't done it, they're still in there, but that one was soft. It's also a golden tiger. He's a superb flower. And uh, I only had one seed. I'll give me mates one each as well. And he's still hard, so I thought, oh, I ain't going to bung him. So I bunged him back in again. So I'm helping him out, watered, and then I put him a little uh, cover on him, help him out. The dwarfen, yeah, pot him on. Then put him in the propagator just to help him out for a, a couple of days before I bung him out. Well, there's a few more sweet peas come through. Getting close to being watered. Um, I probably, I think I did two of these. Then I had to go and do something else. But I keep coming back. So obviously now I'm back to do a few more. All we made all the roll, Ray, is all we've been bowling for at, at our place. There's loads of uh, greens around by us. And uh, I said, you're packing in. He says, yeah. I mean, he's got six anyway. So he gives me two of his. He's a good lad. And Paul Davis wants to start up and all. Me and Highness, we for a walk. And I cut the grass. And my comfrey's come through, if you remember. Uh, is it early this year, they started cutting the perimeter, this edge. Keep the weeds down. They cut straight through me bloody comfrey. 
We have to come through again. But there's loads of yum, uh, nettles and all. So I'm picking them and the grass, the green, fresh grass, because I've got no grass now. Highness approving. And that's Richard. That's a new new chap who's coming. I think he's from Yorkshire. But he lives just over the back here. And I've jobbed him as well. He's joined our garden club. Come to the last meeting. So there's three dog walkers now. I've got to join our garden club. Because if they walk the dogs, I'm local, are they? So there's my grass cuttings, my nettles. There's my shredded um, paper, kitchen scraps. All the bits from underneath, plus my eggshells and my droppings. And that was my tea bag of osmuk when I made the two bottles of liquid osmuk I needed. So I've dried that out. That's my bundling as well. So I'll get the muck out first. Beautiful stuff. This was all the manures I got alpaca and goat, os, everything. I'm breaking them up, cutting everything up. The smaller, the better. The more you can mix them. That one there, that's not a stain on my job, but that's a little chap in flight. So I waited for him to land. Then I went and went, put him on me, little chap, sorted him out. One of ours. Right, everything goes into an empty compost bin and upended a few times. Perfect. Don't forget my bin of story from scratching bin because I've emptied it. So wood chip on the bottom, which you know, I'll just make it up there. Hung that in, weighted it, covered it. Mm -hmm. I had a visit during the week, uh, Lynn and Steve from Brum. I was doing, um, so they, like, they go to Portland. Uh, well, they like Portland, but they go down Weymouth every year on holiday. And the Canna, uh, city of Portland, Canna, the new one got. And Steve asked for this one. I said, yeah, I think I had three. So, obviously, I've, I've looked after Steve more than anybody else, but he's a corker and all, and he's thrown two side shoots. So, they come and picked him up. And uh, they dropped me loads of stuff off. Four cans of cider, they were good. Coffee grounds, loads of things. Raw right, as did during the week, I saw these, how much is it for? Down the bottom, 19 quid for a litre. Spiced, yes, I know one of them. Right, because uh, I ain't got the manure now with the worms in, I've got to start from scratch again. So, fish and tackle shop, one dollar per worm, four quid. That's all I need. So, I'll open one side, put half of them on there, close that up, open the other side, the other half, go on there. Now they can get going. They've got the food, the moisture, and the warmth. Right, he started that can of seed which I put in. He's going to get a nice and warm in there. I mean, he's in a propagator anyway. If that don't work, then it ain't going to work. Right, there's loads of aphids about. This rose uh, always gets it. It's got a few buds on, uh, pink. So I'm going to put them splatted. So I've got my spray, put him on jet, and I splatted them all off. Cleaned them. In fact, I did it again tonight at the top of the garden. I'm all over me, uh, blackberries and all. Right, this is often in the steam when they come. Give me a bag of me, spent coffee grounds. Always dry it out, break it up by hand. So I get into a powder form. I've got good ventilation in the top tunnel. So that's blowing through there and drying it. Keeping it dry. Uh, my wood chip I got. There's two dollops of wood chip I got now. That's the old and that's the new one. So I'm going to take the lumps out and basically just mix them together. So them lot will go in between my fruit trees. And that lot will be mixed with the other lot. Look at that, beautiful. So that is now a good compost ingredient. Because there's no lumps in it. Perfect. That was another dollop I got. That's the last dollop I got from the churchyard. Um, come World War Grave. In fact, there's still a dollop there. I could go down and borrow some more. So these lots at the back coming out. 
which one was a wood chip. That's a good brew. Um, leaf molds in there and everything. Uh, the small leaf mold, which I used to get with them, um, it was in doggy bags as well. Just get one a day when I took the hound over a different park. I ain't been there this year, but I've still got loads of this leaf mold left. But it's beautiful. Perfect. And that's what mixed with my stuff. And the uh, half a bag of beer is only compost. But there's a dry and a, a moist leaf mold, so they're mixed up as well. Any worms, I'll take them out and put them in the, in the compost. So I've still got all my different ingredients. Obviously, the big bags at the back, the tall and the small in the front. A couple of chilies coming through, which uh, Alan brought back when he went to Holland. Some cork is the colours on it. Right, working my way along. Sun's out. These pots come back out. If they do forecast a frost, then I'll just cover them up. And then we're okay because I'm in the shed anyway. And uh, I've made a bit of room in the shed, first time for moves. But uh, I've had a few more pots now, so I'll just cover them. These are two uh, peach. Uh, potted up probably about two weeks ago. Well, I'm just covering them as well, just in case. I know I'm in the tunnel, but uh, I don't want to lose them. And this is one at the end of my, one of my raised beds. So I'm just uh, helping them out and all through a nice sunny warm day. And not at the, didn't focus on frost, but it was down to two or three. So just in case, I'm covering him in fleece as well. Right, that's these lot done. All my boreholes. Take him off in the morning. That was down at uh, our, our venue, Crazy Sports Social Club. That was a sign outside. I'm going to get some paint from being cured, similar to that. So I'm going to wallop some of it out. Another photo of another truly, but the size of it is huge. Obviously, it's semi hand underneath. It's good to get the sun behind it. You see the colours better. There's some corkers in there. Sun makes all the difference, do it. Eggshells, got to be ground up, that's better. Better for me worms. Right, Vitas Q4. I want this in powder form, but this was pellets. These are a good buy from our trade. Oh, okay. I do, Ben. I'm going to go in now. My Zoom was uh, playing up. Oh, okay. Cheers, Ben. Don't know a bit. He's a good lad. So I want this in powder form. This is my mixture for me bore off. That's better. Still some lumps in, so I'll put it through my sieve. Yes, that'll do. Uh, and someone comes through the post, which was me um, uh, Tabry. I know you've had a bit on it earlier on. There was the, the peony. The freebie. I've had two of them. Two friends. Oh, really cockles they've made. Hmm. So my scales, uh, I'll put my container on first and then to you on. I mean, it starts from zero, working in grams. And you just put it in what I want. So I've got my superphosphate, calcified seaweed, don't want lime, um, 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 um. Vortex Q4. Once I've weighed them out, I just bung them in here. Luckily, I had a don't want lime about six years ago. And there's only the, the big boys who use it. Uh, I think it's four quid a bag, which ain't bad, actually. But, uh, these lot, that's me mixture ready for mine. When you have to go in with me bore holes. Uh, top's dried out, so I mix it again. Drying the stuff was underneath. It is nearly dry. It's just a bit slight colour in there. Well, that lot is ready to go with me two bags of mixed growing medium. 
So all I'm going to do is a 15 and a half litre out of each bag. It'll give me, me 31 litres. And that'll go into that bag. So that's what I've done. The I now put him in a, a larger bag, which is a for me a larger which is a hundred litre bag. I can mix it better. And I put my bits in there. Mix that up. Beautiful stuff. He's ready. Right, well, I've got to make myself a funnel. So I need uh, two tapered ones, one large, one small. If it's the grey one's just a bit too big. So we try the yellow one and he goes in the hole. Oh, yep. Yeah. That'll do. Take him out. That one needs to go on top. Perfect. Chop the bottoms out. Still a bit rugged. So I'll make it a clean cut all the way around. Perfect. Look at that. And it sits on there beautifully. I was going to tape that, but you don't need it. Just tape around the outside just then. So there's my funnel for, for it going in. Uh, stopping going all over the place. And uh, each hole gets two and a half litre. Obviously, there's a bit left over. Because when the rain compacts this, it will drop down. Then it'll fill up again. Perfect. And then uh, just go along to the lot. Put the label in the middle so I know where my seed's got to go. Give it a good watering. It is open the roof. So it is growing outside, basically. I've got one back, a um, bit of plastic on the back. But the sides and front of all. Give him a good soak and give him half hour and come back with him again. Uh, most of the fruits in blossom. A couple of suits to come. Uh, just to help him out when they can. Give him another watering. My stuff which is underneath uh, on the afternoon. Well, it's under the stage. But when on the afternoon the sun gets under there. So I have to keep remembering to wait to them as well. Right, this is near enough done now. I'll put my wire on the top just in case a squirrel starts looking for his bloody nuts. Bit black over Bill's mothers. Are we going to get a frost again? Another little markings there telling me there's a slug about. So I lifted him. Well, then I have to lift him. Felt him underneath. So I jobbed him and all. And these are Scott. He sent me some uh, magic big chili seeds. A packet on them. So let's split them up. Up in the old uh, plastic cup. Separate them individually. Nice roots on all on them. There's only one little one. I don't think I used him in the end. Pick him up on the leaf, bung your finger in, make your hole. Or you always firm up to the top of the stem. This is with everything I used to do, tomatoes, bloody lot. And you get extra roots on that stem. In fact, I, I did it on everything along. All my brassicas sprouts the lot. You're a stronger, healthier plant. Uh, I'll keep a couple of these, the rest will be down there and bring them by our next meeting. So then we'll fill the propagator out again. These lot, if the sun is out, which is, has been the last few days, keep an eye on the watering. Right, them two was from the same seed, potted at the same time. He's bigger because I've potted him on. But I've potted him on at the same time. it have been the same size as him now. Because you've got a different brew under him, more feed and whatever. I'm looking after him. That's why he put on. So the last one, the little ones, I'm putting them on. Just telling me he needs putting on. Straight up to that first leaf again. I'm still checking the one in the tunnel from last year to see if he has survived. But the, obviously, no signs yet. Well, they're right. It's still getting cold nights. 
uh, just keep an eye on everything. And like everybody's green out and getting bloody chocker. Oh, look at that. Got a bit of steak from middle. So he's cutting quarters. Four rounds of bread. Onion. Thick gravy. Mm -hmm. Good frost last week. So I bought him in the greenhouse. I thought I was going to job him. Hound again. These were nicer tufts. And then they'll do them. Um, that's a bit better. But there was cork as I said, none like that before. Right, this is dry as a boon now, so I can bag him up. So that's one just in case I get a, uh, a talk. And this lot is good in mind. That's my old bag of uh, spent coffee grounds mixed with spent tea leaves. That's mixed. So the rest of this lot is going in there. And that's mixed up as well. Perfect. That goes under the bed. Right, these lot have come through now. Uh, go back on that one. Because the sun's this side, comes up here and goes down there. I'm all drawing to the sun. So turn them around. Now they're all facing this row. No, I do that with everything. My leaks as well. Turn them. Hoya. Uh, house plant. I had this off Lizzie. Gosh, it's got to be a year ago. Kept him in the greenhouse. I thought, oh, I better do something with him. So I will. I notice these chaps, they was up here. So all I'm doing to persuade them is put that leaf behind that one and that leaf behind that one. So that stops him springing up. And I've done the same with that leaf there and that one to train him doing that way. Right, back on me, little chap. This is the pot he's going in. So he's at the bottom of the stairs, so we take him in, bung him in the greenhouse, hang him up. Uh, there are no good core work from there. So I put a cane across the top and bung him across there. That's better. Trust me to have a white string and a bloody white pot. It's so hard getting the pot out and then pulling it back in again when you've planted up. So I'm going to do it while he's in the string. Right, looking it up. In summary, the best soil for oil plants, well-draining, rich in nutrients, requires good aeration for the roots. peat by soil or bark mix, cactus mix, vermiculite. Perfect. Bit of vermiculite. There's my old compost. And there's me mixture and me brew, which is... Um, um, the small leaf mold plus roll is biochar. So this lot is going to thrive like a ferret. If if he dies in that, then I'm a crap gardener. So I'm just lifting him out to separate this lot. New bit of paper underneath. I don't the crap going out. Right, let's see what we got. At least six on it. This chap I've took all the enough soil I didn't need need on it and put him where I wanted, i.e. in the middle, and all them other ones going around the outside. Put him up straight, just tie him up loosely, just to hold him in place. Then I'm gonna eat the other chaps and plant them around the side. I think there's two, one mature and one little on either side, which is perfect. It's a bit tedious, but uh, once it's done, it's done. The hardest part is where it is. Because that's going to fill up. I suppose I could have lifted him, took the string, no, nah, too much bloody hassle. Anyway, when I waited him. Until I could see a drop in the bottom, then left it. Come back off and now and get him another drop of water. Then I took me my tie off. Postman come, we had this in. What the hell is that here? Royal Mines couldn't have deserved that with all that customers. No thanks. Tell that with you. Tailors with compliments. 
the old name of the gladi. It's not Bangladesh, but it's a different colour corn from the Bangladesh. So God knows what they've sent me. I have messaged them. Scraped all the crap off. It's still too uh, a, bit, a bit naff, but um, I got 10 in the end. As you see, that was crap. I should just slice him off. Or soak him in jays. Right, this little chap here. He did it very well. Well, moved him in the middle and uh, looked it up and it, it's just the cold weather that's why he don't look very well one reason was he's too wet or he's too dry oh Christ if you think he's dry and you're wet him and he's not dry he's too wet you're going to make it worse and then I looked into it further and he said it's, it's the cold weather he'll pick up when the weather picks up and go for that but I did have a look. <coughs> he's still got the drainage, drainage underneath. So he's got the drainage. He ain't getting away. It's long. And uh, it's nice and moist inside. We weren't overweighted. We weren't dry. So let's get away from it. Right. Going back to our mate. Waiting him again. And just make him out. Because up on the tilt, all the surplus out of there is now coming out. So he's drunk everything he wants. That's so how I'm doing. Sorting my books out for... I don't need these anymore, so I'm going to take them down for the... Our meeting. That's a good one. Well, they're all bloody good. Rich Mole, good laddies. He was my compare, quite a few shows. And I had his book off. We did a swap. To the, make the Compost King one of the best speakers ever. He's a good lad. I shall go and see him soon. This is one uh, uh, Ben Drew when he was at um, the nursery. I was going to do a leek, some of the onions. Ten Bangladesh. Five, originally. Right, he's nearly dry. I've cleared all the, the stuff out of there now so he can go back in the living room. Living room, bottom of the stairs. Perfect. Right, I'm keeping one of these. One of these will go to our, our bring the boy, the ginger. Right, these little tops I've saved from last year. Them was little green houses over my stump carrots just to look after them, keep the frost off. I've only got nine, so I need two more. So I'm chopping them tops off, which I've sliced there. Yeah, I've got 11 green houses when I need them. These lot will be turned as well. There we go. Because they're obviously going towards the light. As soon as the frost was cleared off, which might be next week, then they'll all go back outside again. Right, watering me here. Exhibition suite, please. Give them a, a good drink. You give me a shout two days ago, the bloody hawk. Because I had to zoom in on my camera. The bird feeders up there. In fact, they tried to grab one of the birds last week and he swooped, swooped down. Such a commotion. I, was, I couldn't get a, a clear shot. I got him on video, but they didn't bloody come out either. But uh, cleared him off. Mm, yeah, of course, he very well. I know it's only day two, he's after summer to eight, but uh, go and eat somebody else's sparrow. When I was a kid, cheese and onion, well, I think I was eating cheese, Chris, they were cheese and onion then. But you could taste the cheese on the flavour. You stuck to your fingers for the week. And these kettle crisps are close. They were cheese crisps used to be. So I'm buying them, they were all. Eddie the Eagles was on last night, the film. I thought I'd watch it. Loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Because he's a, he was a proper stubborn Englishman, but he was determined and uh, more afraid. And uh, I thought it was a brilliant film. If you get a chance, so I'll get on catch up. But uh, lovely. Right, this was um, 
quarter to seven this morning. Because there's a school just up there. It's where all the mothers park with the kids. And some of them really really cars there all day. So we got a, a delivery to the shed. So I broke all that off. So the wagon can get it to park up. And that one, them two there. So you can swing around here. That was ready for delivery. We went back in the greenhouse, started putting some more stuff up. Re reunion Sunday, that's why there's no Zoom. And uh, there's one of the lads there. Um, I'm getting a McKenna with his missus. So I'm sorting all these out. Look at that. Mm, nice, white, thick roots. Once they start going and they get a bit of thickness on the leaf width, then uh, you've got to keep an eye on because they, they go loop. Well, just to pick me up because uh, liquid fish, a uh, couple of drops of that is a um, two gallon bucket. And then we made it rungus. So I went and sit him down there. Perfect. Drop me a pallet off. When he comes in, he can just scrape through getting in and out because a car's parked opposite. But at least he does it. He said he got about an inch to spare. Good lad. And I had eight vermiculite and eight fish blood and bone. That tells you that's one of our best sellers, fertilizer, fish blood and bone. We have to have a 300 quid worth to get free delivery. But uh, that stuff goes well as well, the big uh, The only one thing you didn't have was labels. But uh, I asked for them last time as well, when I had two grams worth of stuff off him. So I said, we'll, we'll, I'll send them through the post when we get them. Good lad. And uh, tell her a lot. I said, I remind her, just keep everything covered up. Fertilizer and that. And that's anybody who wants a spare pallet. And that is a wrong way to put a padlock on because they can get in there, turn it round, and it goes on that way. It hides that shank. Damien Lewis, probably never heard of him, but he uh, spent 20 years reporting from war, disaster, and conflict zones around the world, meaning he knows a lot of the assayers. And uh, you know, true stories, obviously. It's going to be a, a major movie. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. And he was doing it, Guy Ritchie. He's done some uh, Boston films. I thought I'd see one of his last week. That series that was on the box. Well, uh, that, that, that's coming out very soon. Perfect. This is my Henry from uh, Manila, Philippines. Buffalo, horse, goat, chicken. Buffalo, dung. Now that'll be a good one. Only if you'd send me some through the post, yeah, it is. Right, people, that's, that's, that's well, well, an hour. Not too long, not too short. At least we got there. Suzanne, you're on. Dennis and all. Kath, nice to see you. Paul, man. You ready, yeah, for, mate. You ready for tomorrow, Rick? Yeah, shopping in the morning. I'll be down later. Good man. <laughs> Dennis, you ain't been on for a while. Suzanne. All right, here, Boston. Have a good what? week, mate. Have a good weekend, everybody. Cheers, people. Yeah. Next to 28th of uh, this month. So it's a week right, Sunday. Mate. Next to Enjoy your weekend. Cheers. Cheers, yeah. Keith, mate. Cheers, mate. Bye, Take bye. care. Bye. Bye. Cheers, See you, peeps. <laughs>